Direct modeling is also powerful when working with models that have no history associated with them. Notice in the timeline that this part has no history and is just a base feature. Let's use direct modeling techniques to edit this history-free model. We want to remove these unnecessary small ribs. To do that, we'll select the faces we want removed. However, we also need to select a fourth face to let Fusion know how to heal the area that we are removing. Here you can see that by removing this extra fourth face, this other face will grow back to the next boundary face. Let's repeat the same procedure on the other side. Direct modeling is also useful to fix minor issues with your design. In this example, we can see that these two faces are at a different angle, and we want them to be the same. By selecting one of the faces and deleting it, the angle of that face is now constant. Direct modeling can also be used to help fix modeling errors that were created but unforeseen. For example, this step down on the back of the part may not have been intended. In other CAD systems, one might have to project a profile and re-extrude it, but that would overlap the other machining features, such as this slot. Using direct modeling, we can just select the two faces we want removed and delete them away. Notice how Fusion fixed the area by growing the faces and even extending the fillets. Another design change we need to make is to move this screw boss down by a few millimeters. By just drawing a selection box around the boss, we can freely move the faces all together. However, if we edit the free move in the timeline, notice it does not tell us how far we moved the screw boss. Instead, we should use the Translate option in Move. Notice now when we edit the Move feature in the timeline, it shows us how far we moved and even allows us to update the distance. So, we recommend that you don't use the Free Move unless you don't care about capturing the distance or angle. Now let's say not only do we want to move the screw boss down a little bit, but we also want to rotate it a few degrees. Using a crossing selection, we can select more faces and rotate them around a circular edge. Notice it is keeping the tangency correct when rotating the faces. Looking at these ribs here, it was decided that they should end more in line with the screw mounts. Because there is no sketch to modify or features to change, we will have to use direct modeling to accomplish this. Select the two faces we want to move and then rotate them around a circular edge. Notice the preview shows what the result will look like and notice it even extends the fillet if necessary. That's direct modeling at its best. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Unfortunately, again, due to bad modeling practices, we can see that this fillet isn't tangential to this other edge like it should be. We can fix that by just deleting it, and notice how the other faces grow to a sharp point. We can now measure the other face to find out what its radius is, and use that to create a new fillet.
There. We now fix the problematic fillet with a nice new tangential fillet like it should be. The last thing we need to do is to make a major change to the model. It was determined that only one supporting rib at the front of this part is not strong enough for the thin plastic ring. Using direct modeling, we can just rotate the existing rib 35 degrees. Instead of having to create a new sketch or machine away geometry, we can just use the existing geometry. Now we will just mirror these faces over to the other side, and just like that, we have fixed the problem. So hopefully you saw the benefits of using direct modeling on a history-free model.